encephalitis, herpes simplex encephalitis. You've probably had a cold sore, annoying but harmless, right? Now imagine that virus skips your lips and goes straight for your brain. That's herpes simplex encephalitis, where the herpes virus stops playing dermatologist and starts playing demolition crew inside your skull. It starts subtly. First there's fever, headache, maybe some confusion. But then it ramps up like it's trying to speedrun brain damage. You might forget your own name, start seeing things that aren't there. Your speech slurs, your personality flips. It's like your brain suddenly downloaded a glitchy update from hell. And it gets even worse. This virus also loves your temporal lobes, the parts that handle memory and language. So while your body is lying in bed, your brain's over here deleting files and rearranging your internal monologue like a mad editor with no chill. It's rare, but when it hits, it hits. Without treatment, the mortality rate is around 70%. With treatment, it's still a medical emergency with lifelong side effects like memory loss, epilepsy, and personality shifts. Survivors often walk out of it feeling like a different version of themselves. Brain aneurysm. One minute you're walking around, living your life, vibing. Then suddenly, something in your brain explodes. That's basically what happens with a brain aneurysm, a condition where a blood vessel in your brain gets weak, like soft spot on a balloon weak, and starts to bulge. It's nope. not always a big deal at first. Most of the time, it's just sitting there doing nothing. Harmless, like that one app on your phone you never open. But if it bursts, that's when the real chaos hits. We're talking brain bleed, massive pressure, emergency room, maybe even death. There's no neon sign saying, hey, your brain is about to explode. Just vague headaches, blurry vision, maybe some neck pain. You could literally be mid-Netflix binge and not know your blood vessel is planning mutiny. Also, it's often genetic. So you could be out here living clean, drinking kale smoothies while your brain quietly starts a mutiny. Sometimes it's caused by trauma, high blood pressure, or smoking, but sometimes it's just bad luck with the brain lottery. If it ruptures, survival is a coin toss. And even if you do survive, you're not always walking away the same. And if there's one thing that you really nope. shouldn't walk away from, it's us. So if you love this video, hit the subscribe button for more. Thank you. Anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis. You wake up one day, and your brain's not yours anymore. You're paranoid, hallucinating, maybe even speaking gibberish. Doctors think it's drugs or maybe a psychotic break. But plot twist, your immune system is the actual villain here. That's anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, a brain disease that hits like a horror movie. It's what happens when your body decides your brain's communication centers look a little too suspicious and start attacking them. Specifically, the NMDA receptors, the ones in charge of memory, behavior, and, you know, thinking straight. At first, it looks like a mental health crisis. You're anxious, confused, maybe you're hearing voices or talking in loops. And just when everyone thinks you're heading for a psychiatric hold, bam, seizures, catatonia, so now you also stop speaking and stop moving as your brain has also gone completely offline and nobody knows why. The terrifying part is that it often hits young, healthy people. Women in their teens and 20s are most affected, and it's so rare that many get misdiagnosed for weeks or months. Meanwhile, their brain is glitching like a corrupted hard drive. Korsakoff Syndrome you wake up in a hospital bed. The doctor walks in and asks, what year is it? You smile and say, 1997, confidently. One problem, it's 2025. That's Korsakoff syndrome, a brain disorder that doesn't just mess with your memory, it bulldozes it. It's caused by a severe lack of vitamin B1, usually from years of alcohol abuse, but sometimes from starvation or chronic malnutrition. Your brain needs thiamine, like your phone needs a charger, because without it, the battery doesn't just die, it forgets it ever existed. The damage hits the brain's memory center, especially the thalamus and hippocampus. That means new memories would not be happening while old memories would be spotty at best. You might hold a conversation for five minutes, then repeat it again like it's brand new, over and over, like living in a glitching time loop. What's worse is you don't even realize you're forgetting. 
so your brain fills in the blanks with lies it thinks are true. It's called confabulation, basically creative storytelling meets neurological damage. People with Korsakovs can seem totally normal at first glance. They'll chat, laugh, and recall stuff from years ago. But ask what they had for breakfast, or if they even ate, and it's like the tape skips and the mind just unravels. Neurocysticercosis. You know what's worse than a brain freeze? A brain parasite. Well, this is the nightmare known as neurocysticercosis, where your brain is literally under attack by a worm. Not a metaphor, an actual tapeworm from a pig. It starts innocently enough. You eat undercooked pork or accidentally ingest food contaminated with tania solium eggs. Instead of hitting your stomach and digesting, the larvae go full Trojan horse, sneak into your bloodstream, and set up camp in your brain like it's a free Airbnb. Now, once they're in, your nervous system throws a tantrum, which results in seizures, headaches, nausea, confusion, and even psychosis. It's like your brain's trying to run Windows 95 while being DDoSed by spaghetti. What makes this so scary is that the freaking worm can actually lie dormant in your brain for years, and then suddenly decide to unleash neurological chaos. Doctors call it the most common parasitic brain infection worldwide. And in some parts of the globe, it's a leading cause of adult-onset epilepsy. Yeah, that, uh, sacred pork taco just became a horror origin story. Treatment involves antiparasitics, steroids, and sometimes brain surgery. Locked-in syndrome. Imagine being wide awake, totally conscious, but you can't move at all. You're not dreaming, you're nope. not paralyzed in a nightmare, you're trapped inside your own body. That's locked-in syndrome, a condition where your brain still works, your thoughts, memories, personality, all intact, but your body doesn't get the memo. It usually happens after a stroke or brainstem injury, specifically damage to the pons, a part of your brain that's basically the Wi-Fi router for movement. When that goes out, your muscles ghost you. The only thing left is eye movement. That's it. You communicate with blinks, Morse code by eyelash. In fact, doctors used to think these patients were in comas, vegetative, gone. <laughs> Meanwhile, the person inside was screaming, I'm still here! It took advanced brain scans and patient blink spelling bees to prove they were alive and aware. It was like being in a room with no doors, watching the world go on without you. Family, friends, life, and all you can do is think about it. Pandas. One day, your kid's totally fine, but the next, they're having wild mood swings, anxiety out of nowhere, OCD rituals, and even full-on tics. It literally looks like a personality transplant, but nope. it's not puberty, it's not drama, it might be pandas. Oh, short for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Streptococcal Infections. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but here's the rundown. Strep throat breaks into the immune system, steals the keys, and crashes straight into the brain. Normally, your immune system fights bacteria. Cool, love that. But with pandas, it gets a little too excited. It attacks the strep and accidentally starts attacking the brain, specifically the basal ganglia, which handles things like movement and emotions. This results in a kid who suddenly develops severe anxiety, intrusive thoughts, rage outbursts, or compulsive behavior seemingly overnight. It mostly looks like a mental health issue, so parents get sent to therapists, not neurologists. Meanwhile, the real villain, the rogue immune response, keeps doing damage. The trigger is usually a strep infection, but there's also a sibling disorder, PANS, which can be triggered by any infection or even environmental toxins. Treatment includes antibiotics, steroids, maybe even IVIG to basically hard reset your immune system. The earlier it's caught, the better. Temporal lobe epilepsy. Sometimes your brain just blanks. You're mid-sentence, then suddenly you're staring at the wall like a loading screen. Or you feel like you've been here before, but you haven't. Or you randomly smell smoke, but nothing's burning. That's not nope. just zoning out, that could be temporal lobe epilepsy, a brain condition where tiny seizures mess with your emotions, memory, and sense of reality. 
It happens in the temporal lobe, the part of your brain that handles memory, feelings, and understanding what's going on around you. When this area misfires, you get weird side effects. Deja vu, fear out of nowhere, hallucinations, zoning out, or acting confused without realizing it. And here's the thing, these seizures aren't always the big dramatic kind you see on TV. A lot of them are small, sneaky, and easy to miss. You might just freeze up or do something repetitive like lip smacking or blinking fast. You might not even know it happened until someone tells you later. TLE can be caused by brain injuries, infections, genetics, or nope. no clear reason at all. It's chronic, which means it doesn't just go away. Some people can manage it with meds, others might need surgery, but either way, it's not just an occasional brain blip. It's a recurring glitch that can affect your whole life. Fernicke's Encephalopathy Have you ever walked into a room and forgotten why you're there? Now imagine doing that constantly, while also stumbling like you're three tequila shots deep and struggling to move your eyes in a straight line. That's Wernicke's encephalopathy, a brain breakdown caused not by trauma, but by a lack of vitamin B1. Yep, a vitamin deficiency. Your brain is basically short-circuiting because it's missing a molecule that sounds like it should come from a gummy bear. It hits hard and fast, and the classic signs are confusion, wobbly walking, and weird eye movements. That's the cursed trio. If your brain were a phone, Wernicke's is like having 5% battery, no charger, and all your apps crashing at once. Most commonly, it's linked to chronic alcoholism, since alcohol blocks your ability to absorb thiamine. But it can also show up in people with eating disorders, extreme vomiting, or anything that messes with nutrition. It's not rare, it's just underdiagnosed. Because unless you're looking for it, it hides behind symptoms that look like other stuff. Stiff Person Syndrome you know that feeling when you're about to slip on ice and every muscle in your body goes rigid in panic? Now imagine your body doing that randomly for no good reason and refusing to let go. That's stiff person syndrome, a neurological condition that freezes you up like a popsicle or one of those fainting goats. At its core, it's a problem with communication between your brain and your muscles. Normally, your brain uses a chemical called GABA to tell your muscles when to chill. But with stiff person syndrome, your immune system starts attacking the parts of your brain that make GABA. No GABA means no chill. Your muscles tense up and refuse to relax. What makes it worse is that almost anything can be a trigger. Stress, loud noises, sudden movement, things that wouldn't bother most people can trigger painful spasms or full body stiffness. You might be walking one second and frozen the next like your body hit the panic button and forgot how to turn it off. There's no cure and it's incredibly rare. Most people have never even heard of it, but for those who live with it, life becomes a constant balancing act, managing symptoms, avoiding triggers, and trying to keep their body from turning against them. Moya Moya disease. This condition is a serious cerebrovascular disease where the blood vessels in your brain, the ones doing the crucial job of, you know, keeping your brain alive, start narrowing, like really narrowing, like trying to sip a milkshake through a coffee stirrer narrow. And your body, being the chaotic overachiever it is, tries to compensate by building new tiny blood vessels around the blockage. That uh, cloudy little tangle of baby vessels, that's what moya moya means in Japanese, a puff of smoke. But the problem here is that those new vessels are weak, fragile, unreliable. And when you're relying on those to keep your brain from stroking out, you've got a problem. Symptoms include strokes, mini strokes, seizures, cognitive decline. Basically, your brain throws out warning flares that it's not getting the blood it needs. Kids often present with strokes, adults with bleeds. Sadly, there's no cure, but surgery can reroute the blood flow. Sort of like installing a bypass lane around a traffic jam. Brain abscess. Your brain is supposed to be a clean VIP only zone, but sometimes an infection breaks past security, sets up shop, and builds a pus filled Airbnb inside your skull. That's a brain abscess, a literal pocket of infection chilling where your thoughts are supposed to live. It usually starts with bacteria or fungi sneaking in from somewhere else, like an ear infection, a sinus infection, or even a lung problem. 
Once it hits brain territory, the immune system freaks out, walls it off, and boom! You've got swelling, pressure, and a tiny blob of doom inside your head. Symptoms may come as intense headaches, seizures, confusion, vomiting, and sometimes full-on personality changes. One day you're normal and chill, and the next you can't remember your own name or you're yelling at the toaster. And the worst part is, it's not always obvious. You might just feel off until it escalates into a full emergency. Left untreated, a brain abscess can rupture, and when pus hits the brain, uh, things go downhill fast. Transient Ischemic Attack TIA. It doesn't start with sirens, it starts with confusion. One minute you're mid-sentence or sipping coffee, the next your arm won't move or your words come out scrambled. Then, just as fast, it's over. Everything's back to normal, almost like it didn't happen. That's not a fluke. That's a transient ischemic attack, TIA. The brain's version of a smoke alarm. Loud, terrifying, and usually ignored until something's actually on fire. You see, your brain runs on oxygen, and that oxygen gets delivered through blood. A TIA happens when a clot temporarily blocks that blood flow. No oxygen equals brain cells freak out. So you get stroke symptoms, numbness, slurred speech, vertigo, vision loss. But since the clot clears fast, there's no lasting damage. Emphasis on the word lasting, not harmless. Because a TIA is basically your brain saying, Hey, I just dodged a stroke. You want to try that again, but permanent? About one in three people who have a TIA will have a full-blown stroke later on, often within 48 hours. And strokes? Those don't just go away. They leave scars, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Hydrocephalus. Your brain isn't supposed to slosh, but in hydrocephalus, that's exactly what happens. Normally, your brain has this crystal clear fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. It's like the coolant in your brain engine that protects, nourishes, and keeps everything flowing smoothly. But when that fluid builds up too much, then you've got a problem. A very literal pressure problem. Hydrocephalus is when CSF can't drain or gets overproduced. It collects inside your skull and starts putting the squeeze on your brain. Think of it like blowing up a balloon inside a box. At some point, something's gonna give. And spoiler? <laughs> It's not the box. This pressure messes with everything. Memory, coordination, mood, vision. In babies, it can cause the head to physically swell, but in adults, it's sneakier. You might get weird headaches, lose balance, or start forgetting stuff. Some people even develop a wet, wobbly, and wacky combo. Incontinence, instability, and confusion. Left untreated, it can cause permanent brain damage or death. But there's good news, because there is treatment. Neurosurgeons can implant a shunt, a tiny tube, that drains the extra fluid. It's like your brain gets its own plumbing system. Microcephaly. Imagine booting up a computer and realizing the processor just stopped updating halfway through. That's kind of how microcephaly works. It's a brain development disorder where the brain doesn't grow like it's supposed to, and as a result, the head ends up smaller than average. Not cute baby head small, medically small, and that size difference usually means something way bigger is going on under the hood. Microcephaly can be caused by a genetic glitch, an infection during pregnancy like Zika, or exposure to toxins. Whatever the cause, the result is the same. The brain's growth gets interrupted, which is like pausing construction on a skyscraper at floor four and just handing over the keys. It's not gonna function like a full building. And the symptoms reflect that, so the child would have developmental delays, trouble with coordination, speech issues, seizures, learning disabilities. This condition is not a one-size-fits-all condition. Some people with microcephaly are mildly affected, others face severe, lifelong challenges.